The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Uh, welcome to the December 27th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, coming to you live from Delray Beach, Florida. It's 8.06 in the morning. So if you are listening at the 1 o'clock hour, thanks so much for doing that. We'll try to make today's show as pertinent as we can for you. Of course, if you're listening live, well, we would love to hear from you. So you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, if you can't give us a call, you can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Please put radio show question in that subject heading, of course, in our Tigers Den. Well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Finance News Network. Again, I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now at 8.07 in the morning, we've got all of the U.S. equity futures pointing higher. You've got the Dow up 86 points. Um, the NASDAQ is up uh, 31. S&P at nearly 8 points. The Russell 2000 up uh, four. Now, you do have the spot volatility X trading out at 12.07. That is below a key level of $12.14. So you're going to want to write that number down on a pad of paper, see where the spot volatility index closes at the end of today's trading session. So we'll take a look at that and point out the reasons why. Uh, overseas, uh, all of Asia was trading last night, a mixed market out there. You had the Hang Seng up one and three tenths percent, uh, but you had the uh, Shanghai off, well, it was basically flat down two and a half points, the Nikkei off. 87 points, about four tenths of a percent to the downside. The uh, a, the Australian 200 S&P up 27 points. Uh, the DAX is up uh, half a percent or 71 points right now. The FTSE is up three tenths of a percent. That would be 24 points. Gold is up a buck. We're going to start there. As we go in and answer our first question uh, that came in from uh, Mike, uh, silver's off six pennies, light sweet crude is flat, natural gas uh, down a uh, tad. Uh, T-bonds, T-bond futures up eight uh, ticks as we take a look at the 30-year. She's trading out at 156, 23, 30 seconds out there. Uh, some fairly decent movement in the currencies out here. You've got the uh, U.S. dollar. Now I've got a 10-minute delay, so it's going to be off by just a tad. Trading out at 96.74 down uh, 375 pips out there. Um, so that's what we have going on in the uh, market. So the first question that came in was from uh, Michael H. And Michael writes and he says, is gold rising with a heavy volume or relative strength? So we're going to take a look at both because they're both two different things on this latest trend to the upside, or is it rising on weak conviction? So, uh, and then Mike says, having trouble obtaining accurate volumes, I'd like to go along in 2020. Thank you. So, Mike, uh, for volume, so that you can get some a better perspective from a volume standpoint, what I would do is, uh, if I were you, is I would just simply go take a look at the GLD. You're going to get a fairly good comparable volume um, aspect. Uh, by just taking a look at this ETF out here. You can see that yesterday. And so then to answer your question, I think if you go to the GLD and you put the volume uh, metrics on this, this will probably help you review what you're looking for from a volume standpoint. Uh, you know, did we just take a look at yesterday to know that the GLD was up with 8.3 uh, million shares? Well, that's on higher volume. So that's what the weekly, that's what the daily chart would show us. Now, obviously, we have a shortened trading week here, uh, but we have volume perspectives that are below last week, or you can see a little bit of a declining line out here. Um, let me just draw that in for you. So that way, you, you know, you can go take a look at it to see if there's some meaning there with a volume from a volume standpoint. Let's just get a, a red arrow here. There's a red arrow. So you can see on this weekly chart, you've got uh, over the last several weeks, you've got, in essence, declining volume volume with price moving higher out there. If we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, and there's only two days left in the month out here. Holiday or schmoliday doesn't really matter. Hey, you know, you had November, you have got Thanksgiving. So here on the monthly time frame, you're going to see a declining volume uh, metric out here. So from a volume standpoint, 
you're trying to track that, um, then what I would uh, do is uh, just go take a look at the GLD. I think that if you do that, you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to more easily answer that question. Now, with regard to you said, is uh, price rising with heavy volume or relative strength? on this latest trend to the move upside. So let's take a look at gold here. Uh, this is a little bit of a stripped down chart out here so that we can just take a look at those things that are pertinent uh, or certainly pertinent to Mike. So in the case of uh, Mike, this is a daily time frame chart. And at the bottom of our screen, we have that relative strength that uh, index and so we can see that that is been has been moving higher um, it's up towards that uh, 70 ish threshold area it's trading right now at 68.92 a key level to be watching in gold today would be the close would be 15 17 40 that is yesterday's high uh, that should be the resistance of a TD setup nine count if it does not hold if there's a close above it well Michael that would suggest and everybody else out there that price would continue to move higher we'll take a look at what those levels would be but otherwise there is a potential for a topping pattern here in the case of uh, Goldilocks. So with the TD9 count in place right now, I would not be taking a long position today for your longer term type trade out there. Now that's the daily time frame. Um, I don't have Stevie's uh, oscillator and change line out here. Uh, simply because it makes it easier when I switch from different time frames. So let's go to the weekly time frame chart here for Mike. What do we know about the weekly time frame? Well, in the case of the weekly time frame, has price been rising with uh, with with a little bit more relative strength? Sure, but it's got that road momentum indicator topping pattern out there. That's where price was rising with less relative strength. So that's the top that is in place out here. And until that high gets taken out of really 1543.30, um, that's really your resistance level. And you did see a TD setup nine count bottom pattern here on the weekly chart for gold. So at this stage, it closed about 15, 17, 40, Mike, we would say that price would head to 15, 43, 30. That's on a weekly time frame. Price would need to close above on a weekly basis, 15, 43, 30, to suggest um, a continued move even higher. Now, if we look at the monthly time frame chart here for gold, here's what we're going to see. Uh, as soon as this thing uh, loads up, but I can tell you what we're going to see is, well, I got to pull this back to tell you what we're going to see out here. Uh, you can see that in essence, price is is rising, but well below the uh, relative strength uh, reading that it generated just a few months ago. The highest level was out here on uh, August. Uh, and so the most dangerous thing that could take place out here would be for price to take out the highs, do it with a relative strength index below that. That looks like about 71 or so out there. Then you'd be setting up a uh, larger, longer term uh, potential reversal pattern. Uh, we saw that out here, the roads momentum indicator signal back in September of 2011. Uh, that was also a, a TD setup nine count pattern out there. So it's worthwhile to pay attention to those. So. Uh, Mike, I, I hope that answers your question. Um, if it doesn't, I want to really provide you with some real caution. Um, I know I'm probably the only person out there that is saying this, but it doesn't matter to me whether I'm the only person or not. I call it like it is. I call it like it is from the standpoint of taking a look at the charts, seeing what we see. You know, sometimes my vision is a little bit blurry, but here's the deal out here. Let me see if I can find that chart. We covered it yesterday. Mike, gold is not breaking out across the globe in major currencies. And in the US dollar, it's really underperformed. That in terms of euros or pounds out here, you must be very, very careful. This is setting up to be a huge, gigantic, grizzly bear. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so the show is being uh, recorded. It's 818 in the morning. If you're listening at 118, thanks so much for uh, doing that. Right now, you've got the all the equity futures are pointed higher. Dow equity up 94. S&P 9, NASDAQ up uh, 36 points out there. Uh, let's go to our next question out here. Next question. Uh, this is coming in from uh, Brent. Brent wants to take a look at uh, Occidental Petroleum. Let's read the uh, request out here. First, let's get over to our three time frame charts. And go ahead and type in OXY, by the way, is the uh, ticker symbol for Occidental Petroleum. Brent writes in, says, good morning, and a early morning for Brent. He is catching that worm. Goal, could you please revisit Occidental Petroleum? It's been a while since we looked at this previously. This is a longer-term hold from about the 38 level. Would appreciate a review. Resistance levels, as well as any real relevant TD counts. So uh, thanks so much. Have a great week. And you too as well, Brent. So let's take a look at, uh, here's what we know right now about accidental petroleum. We can see that uh, yesterday, price closed above resistance, uh, that being the top of its uh, daily profile. So that level is $40 even, Stephen, out there. And as long as price stays above that today, that is a positive. Now, the reason we say stays above that today is, well, if we look at the weekly time frame chart, price is traded right into the top of that weekly profile, which is 40 20 and the close yesterday, 40.15. So now you've got your real key level here for Occidental Petroleum. The reason why we say that's a key level out here, folks, not just because of the mere fact that it's the top of a market profile, but when you take a look at this weekly time frame chart and what Brent is really trying to understand, what you're trying to understand, what I'm trying to understand is, is Occidental Petroleum, does this show a change in trend? Now, here's one great way, one great tool to use to assist us with that. Here, as we look at the weekly time frame chart, and this takes us back into the August uh, time frame out here. Let me, uh, this is August of when? August of 2018 out here, June of 2018. It was, well, let's see, when was the last time? Um, let's say really takes us back to September 2018. You know, I'd eventually get it, right? We haven't seen a close above the top of a weekly profile since over, for over a year. So this is a weekly time frame. So if we were to see a close above 4020, it closed at 4015 yesterday. Is five cents a big deal? No. But six cents is. Of course, always having a sixth sixth cents would be a big deal. I don't have a sixth 
sense. But we do know is if you, in fact, close above the top of that weekly profile, it's a real good suggestion that you do have a change in trend. Now, next week would be the, the ultimate proof of that. Two candle closes above that level would be suggesting that to us. Now, let's pull over and take a look at the weekly time frame chart since we have spent so much time there. What do we know about the weekly time frame chart? Well, the weekly time frame chart, price was pushing lower, doing it with less relative energy. We need the cavalry to arrive to tell us that that's a bottom. That, in fact, happened. Now, that did not occur until the week of December 6th when you got that bullish reversal candle. And that was the hammer candle out there. So this would suggest that if price is able to take out the top of that weekly profile, that the run here, Brent, would take you up to the TD9 count breakdown level. That would be 45.42. So that's what the intermediate, I know you're looking at this as being a more intermediate uh, type term hold. So you know that you're up at resistance. The monthly uh, didn't have any profile levels to really assist us. There's no bottoming pattern here to assist us either. So it's really going to be, in my opinion, all on the back of the weekly time frame chart. Now, on the daily time frame chart here, this does tell us you uh, yesterday completed bar number nine of the TD setup nine count pattern. Now, today could be a higher high. Um, so that is so you've got a topping pattern, potential topping pattern, right at, at resistance on the weekly basis. But what you and I are going to do is we're going to rely more on that weekly time frame chart uh, and its task market profiles and whether or not price is able to close above the top of that level. And that is 4020. So Brent, I hope that helps you out with regard to uh, your trade and investment in Occidental Petroleum. Best of luck and have a great weekend as well. Hector and the fuel injectors. He is up early and he says a happy final fabulous Friday of the decade. It is the last Friday of the decade. I think we should party like it's 2019. I'm not sure what that means, but great work yesterday. Show was fantastic. Well, thank you, uh, folks. Uh, uh, and if you didn't catch yesterday's show, what was different about or unique about yesterday's show was uh, over the Christmas holiday, I spent some time. Um, well, every year, uh, I'll tell you how, it, how all that transpired. Every year, the uh, when I say every year, I've only participated in the, uh, in the Tiber Digest uh, group here for the last two years. And uh, but each year they do uh, ask their um, contributors, uh, the folks of the newsletter, about 100, 150 newsletters that they track uh, during the year uh, for a projection of 2019. And so, you know, if I do, you know me, if I do anything, you know, I do it with a uh, great thought. It's not willy nilly put together. And so a part of that uh, presentation from yesterday was coming from uh, stepping back, taking a look at the markets, just trying to understand where we're at. Now, I added a number of things to that. That yesterday because of other uh, email questions that had uh, come in over the last several days out there. But it's a really good feel and understanding for uh, why I believe that uh, we need to be cautious that next year could absolutely be a bear market year. Now, what I mean by that, look, we have bear markets. And what I mean by a bear market here, it's not like the end of the world. It's just a it's just a definition of a correction, right? The market has determined you have a you the the market or the Dow specifically. And this is what uh, the question here for Hector is all about is the Dow. On average, you go back and look at the last 130 years. On average, you have a correction that's 10 percent or more at least once a year. At least once a year. It's not unusual to have two corrections, meaning 10% or more in a year. Bear market, the only thing of the de definition of a bear market out here is the mere fact that uh, that would be 20% or more. Well, you don't have those typically every year. You have those about one every three and a half to five years out here. So we did have one. It was a year ago yesterday when it completed that was on december 26 2018 now that confirmed a nice gartley buy pattern quite frankly but if you wanted to understand where that would take us to even with a bear market even though i'm suggesting 2020 could see a bear what does that mean that means we could easily see a 20 percent correction or so I am not forecasting that because we have to wait for the market to communicate to us what it's going to do. But we have all these tools out here that help us understand that it doesn't, you know, the price projections, for example, price projection would come from like using our A to B equals CD tool order. It's going to be easier if I do this on a monthly time frame. Um, but, and you don't have to trust me, but there was an A to B equals CD to the downside on the daily basis out there uh, that completed. That was the Gartley buy pattern. What's the Gartley buy pattern? You won't see it in the monthly chart, but an A to B equals CD to the downside side in a uptrend out here. Well, if we take a look at the uptrend, where do you want to start? This is the monthly chart. I'd say you just go back to 2016 to January 2016 and every Gartley 
five pattern has five potential outcomes. The first four are just retracements of that A to B equals CD. Once you get above that, which was 26,951 out there, that suggests outcome number five. What's outcome number five? Well, outcome number five is a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the upside. That gives us a price projection of 33,213. And the next one after that would be 36,342. So let's go read Hector's question. He says, radio show question, thank you, Dow blow off top. Uh, so um, what would a blow-off top scenario look like specifically in the Dow? What would a daily or weekly blow-off candle look like? H Hector, I, I don't know what it would really look like out here. Instead, what we're looking for, what I'm looking for in the Dow specifically, um, or let's just say the Dow futures, I'll pull that over here and we'll take a look at that going through the break. But here's your current A to B equal CD pattern that is in play out here. And as soon as a bearish reversal candle forms and price closes below Stevie's green line, that suggests at least a further retracement and a possible change in trend. We'll be right back to take a look at the Dow Equity Futures Company. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, we're taking a look at the uh, Dow Equity Futures contract. Let's uh, peek in on this chart here. Now, in this case, we're showing an A to B equals CD to the upside out here. You're going to see that yesterday was day six 
of a, uh, I'm sorry, today is likely to be day six of a TD setup nine count. Uh, if there's a top, if this is going to be a topping condition, uh, the high would form on bars uh, eight, nine, or the bar following nine. Well, if today is going to be day six, uh, then uh, Sunday, Monday could be day seven. Tuesday, day eight, we're off on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of next week. Um, the markets will be open and, and we could see some type of top then. That would be that pattern. We've got an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside out here. The uh, price is above the 1 to 1 1.272. We use this as a price projection tool, but price does not necessarily have to go hit those price projection areas. Um, at, uh, the next one is 29,424 out here. Uh, but what we, what we can say, Hector, is if we did see some type of bearish reversal candle, uh, that would signal a uh, potential of a retracement. We don't know if it would be a top or retracement. Then the next thing we would look at would be the uh, Stevie's green line. Right now, that's priced at 28.563. A close below that would suggest um, that a retracement would be underway. Now, levels of support, I don't have TAS market profiles up here, but we do have the most recent breakout area, and that would be 27,671 on a uh, pullback and there would be nothing there would be nothing wrong with that market just coming back to test its breakout support level it would be closing below breakout support that would suggest some potential problems out there so what does a blow off top look like uh, i would say uh, I, I don't know the answer to that because i don't think that anybody can really prove it instead i've got other topping patterns out here or topping or bottoming patterns right to me it's all about can we find patterns that are consistent or consistent enough to provide Provide us with information about what the market is doing and I believe the answer to that is yes and then you therefore you and I can get rid of all that noise out there now look I don't believe that I've learned everything that I can about these markets in fact you any of you that have been longtime listeners you know that for sure go back to 2000 and I'd have to ask Tom when I did start doing the radio shows and producing a newsletter, you know, how I wish that that were beginning today versus when it did uh, back in 2008, I think, maybe. No, not eight, uh, 10, 2010 or 11. So it's almost been a decade, right, since I started doing that. And in this decade, compare my skills, my ability uh, to, to 10 years ago. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Uh, uh, and, and hopefully it will be that same even 10 years from now. But what I can share with you is these tools here that uh, that I do share with you each day. These are extraordinarily helpful tools in, in, in being able to analyze what the market is doing. Now, you and I cannot control what's going to happen next. But what we're trying to do is, is to give ourselves a higher probability of what the market is doing. As an example, uh, someone, somebody in our den, maybe it was Tucker, uh, no, or Bodie, was, somebody was asking about natural gas. So here's the natural gas contract. And here is, so one of those tools that we use, as you know, are the market profiles. They help us to identify where otherwise it would be hidden to us, where there are buyers and sellers out here. So these are great tools. Now, in this case, we've got a 60 minute, a 240, a daily, and the weekly time frame chart. What we can see out here is prices, but there's no new daily profiles. There's no new weekly profiles. And prices are below the bottom of those boxes. What the heck does that mean? It means you're below support. You're below support until new support shows up. You can continue moving lower. Now, we have other tools to also help us identify support. Let's focus in on the 60-minute time frame chart because, uh, you know, Hector was asking about a blow-off top. Was there something such as a blow-off bottom out here? Well, let's not even try to answer that, but we can see that huge spike in a two-hour time frame. This um, well, I can't say it was this morning. It was uh, taking us back here. It began at 2 o'clock. It was 2 o'clock between 2 and 4, and then between 4 and 6, this 60-minute, uh, 3 and 4. I'm sorry. It's a one-hour time frame. I'll eventually figure that out. But we can see big, huge move in just a, a two-hour time frame, not four, two-hour time frame. Now, what was that doing, Hector? Or what was that doing to each of you that are watching us on Tiger TV? For me, it's easier to just go look at the chart and try to understand. Was price moving back to a support level out here? Well, let's go find out. As we take a look at the 60-minute time frame for natural gas, if you and I were going to identify a price level as to where natural gas would pull back to breakout support on a 60-minute time frame, it was already written in here. 
well before price started moving down, and that price level, $2.18. Yes, price got below it, but the close is what's really important. Price closed above that level. Um, this was right here. Let me get my cursor out here. So here's a key level of support. There's also resistance. That was at 4 o'clock this morning, and that hammer candle. So price comes in, and, and it turned into a hammer candle. What's a hammer candle mean? With, well, first, you've got to have, directionally speaking, price must be moving lower. It was, and it tells you the market is trying to hammer out a bottom. So in this case here, in natural gas on a one hour time frame, you know the market was trying to hammer out a bottom, came down, tested support, rejected it, generated a hammer candle, followed by another bullish reversal candle, piercing candle, followed by another bullish engulfing candle, and does what? Price bounces right up into where it should be. Where should that have been? Stevie's oscillator on change line. The red green line, the Christmas color line out there, out here. We know that when price was moving lower as it was making that hammer candle, the oscillator on change line was changing colors like a chameleon or sometimes a comedian because it just tests us. But in this case here, it was changing from green to red, telling us that the price oscillator was at zero. Now, when that happens, there's a phenomena that takes place. I can't tell you why, not because I can't tell you why, but because I can't tell you why, if you know what I mean. But what I do know, just simply in observing chart pattern behavior out here, is that we know that when we see that, we see price and that line catch up to each other. Now, it's really important here on a 60-minute time frame because all price has done so far is come down, it's tested one level of support to go up and test an area of resistance, Stevie's green line. Now, it's red, and it's more important. Because if price fails to close above Stevie's red line on a 60-minute time frame, ooh, that's bearish out there, meaning that sellers are in control, and they will try to push price lower again. Now, will we see a close below 218, or will we see a close below the bottom of that hammer candle? That I don't know. Likewise, the other side could take place. It's only 837. This is a one-hour bar. By 9 o'clock, maybe price closes above 2.225. And if it does, then price will run up to resistance. Where's resistance? Well, that was set up and established by the TD setup nine-count pattern, and that's $2.27. So, like, the nine-count doesn't always identify a top or a bottom. But, folks, what it does do, no matter what, I mean, no matter what, what I meant to say was, no matter what, is it provides us with key levels of support or resistance. I can't imagine, well, I can't imagine, because I used to trade without this information. And then I was always asking the question, why? And so that always led me to go out and try and test out other tools or create other tools or look for other patterns out there. I hope that I know that somebody out there or some buddies out there are going to go ahead and take in you know, all the subscribers who, who've watched the uh, archive workshops. They, too, have a uh, sense of wanting to be able to uh, become a better a trader, investors, understand what's going on in the market. They're going to take my tools and improve upon them. Picasso is the one that said, you know, good artist copy, but great artists steal. Yeah. Steal these ideas, improve upon them, and then uh, slip me an email. Show me how you've taken my patterns out here and improved them and made them even better. Support and resistance, real key. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, uh, you know, Marshall in our Tiger's Den has probably the uh, the most succinct uh, quote out here that uh, is something to truly live by. And, and it's, it's very simple. It just uh, reads, uh, success is never to be envied, merely copied. Now, just think about that for a moment and think about that in our current political environment out here. Success is never to be envied, merely copied. Is that really what it's all about out there? The reality is each of us are supposed to help those that are doing poorly to do well and those that are doing well to do better. Take this show as an example, or not this show, I mean, you know, the TFNN network of shows out here and the uh, contributors that we have. We don't dif differentiate between somebody that's just getting in on the game or learning it versus somebody that's already been successful and is looking for some additional tips out there, is looking to, you know, simply copy uh, tools that maybe Basil or David or Tom or Larry have or something like that. Um, it, how is it that we live in an environment where we're trying to punish success? You just want to take your head and just simply, you know, bang it up against a brick wall, though I suggest not doing that. Uh, I've, I've done that before. It, it really doesn't uh, accomplish a whole lot out there. Success is never to be envied, merely copied. If we just simply had that philosophy as a uh, country out here, uh, just imagine how good things could be. And each of you know how I feel about the biggest sham and scam of all, where they sit here, people start trying to tax wealth uh, as if they're really entitled to tax other people's uh, wealth out there, or start talking about the mere fact that, you know, only a certain percentage of the population is in the stock market out there. Why is that? Why isn't somebody asking the simple question, why isn't everybody participating? And everybody should be participating. And the asinine, I can't say that because that is, uh, I believe I can because uh, I just did, um, idea that uh, that Social Security funds are stuck in non-tradable government debt is is it, it is what it it's it's asinine out there. Why is it every yeah, look when you own a business? This is not complicated. You 
first first rule of business, keep all of the guns pointing outside the boat. Because if they're not pointed outside the boat, folks, <laughs> you're going to lose a lot of good people out there. Right? So picture this. Everybody is either having a, is celebrating the mere fact of success. It just simply success is never to be envied. It's to be copied. Look, there's really three ways to be able to, um, there, there's more than three ways, but there's three primary ways in order to be able to generate wealth, right? You know, owning a business, being an entrepreneur, that's one of them, the so-called American dream out there, right? Real estate, many people, most people out there, their wealth is simply accumulated, hopefully, through the uh, rise in real estate prices. And the third way is investments, okay, and those investments, whether they're debt investments, stock market investments, these markets out there. Yeah, you can marry into it. Yeah, you can inherit it, okay? But those are the, the yeah, you can win a lottery out there. But let's just get back to the core, which covers the majority of people out here. And so you're going to eliminate one of those loves, not you, you know, I'm, I'm kind of just referring to the, uh, the old, uh, you know, the, the politicians out there who really have no intent in helping the poor do well. Stealing from the rich to give to the poor is never going to have the poor do well long term. They must, they must participate in the stock market. And you and I, we must make those changes. Okay, back, I don't know how I get off track here. I don't really consider it to be off track. Some of you may feel it's off track, and that's okay. But let's just simply come back to BJ's Wholesale Club. That was a request inside the uh, Tiger's Den for us. And I think the question is, somebody's looking maybe for a bottom. Do I see a turnaround? So if we, do we see a turnaround or a buy entry? So here's what we know right now about BJ's Wholesale Club. We can see that price is trading below its daily and weekly TAS market profile. Now, right now, price is sitting on the weekly TAS market profile, very close to it. The bottom is 2263. Yesterday, it closed 2256. So, in this case here, if in fact there's a close below 22, um, 2263, well, then what that is uh, suggesting to you and I is that this has got uh, move it's going to continue to move lower now move lower to where you know there's several a to b equal cd patterns that we can try to trace out here here's one of them the one that i'm referring to is where the a point is on september 12th the b point is on looks like october the 7th and a uh, a pretty good retracement 86 percent retracement onto november the 11th out here so it does look like prices can continue to move lower out here if i look at my because this is an ipo that uh, takes us back into july of 20 2018. I don't have enough monthly data to provide us with any information out here. But if you're looking to buy this, it doesn't look like it's bottomed out here. And, you know, price is doing the, the, the wrong thing. Like yesterday was a test and rejection of Stevie's red line. That's at 2255. There is a TD setup nine count pattern that's underway. But uh, today would be day could be day number seven or eight. Uh, it, it, maybe what Price is really doing is watch the hammer candle out here. The hammer candle that I'm referring to takes you all the way back to August 16th. That's where you've got some bullish uh, support out there. Maybe Price is just trying to make a beeline. That's in the 2079 to 2140 area. But would I take a long trade in this equity right here, right now, not based upon the information we have as of yesterday's close. Maybe that changes at the end of the day, but right now my answer would be to just uh, sit tight when it comes to uh, BJ's Wholesale Club Holdings. I've never been inside a uh, not one of these locations. I've seen them around, but uh, not not a ton, not like uh, Costco or uh, Sam's Club out there. Okay, so no other question. Now, I want to make sure that I answered the natural gas. We I, I kind of focused in on the 60-minute uh, time frame chart out there. I think it was helpful to do that, just so you understood what was going on. On the daily basis here, as we take a look at natural gas, um, you know, what it didn't do, I think uh, Alex had written in yesterday and was asking, hey, is it a buy? Because, you know, it was a nice bullish candle out there. And what we were taking a look at, hey, if it closes above Stevie's red line, maybe. Of course, we like to see at least two days of a close above resistance if you're going to bottom. And we don't have that right now. Now, maybe at day's end, there is a second close above 2.251. That's Stevie's red line now. And if we did get that, well, then, uh, yeah, maybe that is some kind of bottom, even though price is just trading sideways right now. But right now, the answer to that on natural gas is no. Watch that 60-minute time frame, you know, for blanks and giggles out there, um, actually, just really to observe how 
um, how the laboratory works with regard to the tools that uh, you and I use out there. Uh, let's see, was there a, another question? I want to make sure that I get to all the questions that have come in on oh, natural gas. Um, okay, so we're good. We've gotten through everything. Well, I can't really say we've gotten through everything, but all of the requests out there. So what else do we want to take a look at? What else is going on in the marketplace? How about T-bonds? Take a look at T-bonds out here. Uh, I switched uh, from a uh, bearish uh, position just simply to short-term bullish. Uh, and the reason was is because, well, price is trading above Stevie's red line right now. You've got a bullish structured TAS market profile. And it looks like uh, price wants to go hit the top of that box in the 157-ish area. And that is the long-term treasury bond outlook. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. Thanks for listening. In. Uh, we're recording this show between 8 and 9 in the morning. If you're listening, it's 154 in the afternoon. Uh, thanks so much for doing that. Of course, stay tuned for a couple more great hours of programming today. And we'll be, we will be back with you Monday at the uh, normal time. 
At least I believe that's the case right now. Yeah, that's the case, Monday at the normal time. And uh, Tuesday's a full day of trading as well. Yeah, I don't know why they do that. You know, why, why does the New York Stock Exchange close at uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon? But in any event, they don't. Hey, right now, we've got Dow Equity Futures trading up 75 points. The ES Mini's up 7.5. The NASDAQ up 32. The Russell's up 3. When we began the show, taking a look at what the markets were doing, we had the spot volatility index that was trading much higher than where it is right now. Uh, right now, we're at uh, 1256 seven out here let's go take a look at that uh, because i'd mentioned to you a level which is 1214 what's 1214 out there well that wasn't referring to december 14th that was referring to the closing low in the spot volatility as soon as i can get down here what was the actual day the day was uh december the 16th so that's the lowest closing low that we have right now when i say right now just in a short period of time right now where we have also a rising bottoms closing price spot volatility next with rising price in the S&P 500. You can see I've got other diagonal lines drawn on my chart out here in green. Each of those eventually led to some type of retracement, some more than others out there, more significant. And so just something to be paying attention to. Can you take action? Well, you really can't take action right now because you need something more than just this. If we were to take a look at the uh, short-term equity futures contracts, right, if there were going to be a change in trend, it would begin occurring on the short-term time frames. Right now, we've seen some of the uh, futures trade off a bit. Here's your road's momentum indicator topping signal pattern that is in play out here. In the ES Mini, any pullback, and price would first have to close below 32.50, should find support at 32.47.75. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned because Larry Pesavento is up next. That's for the 9 o'clock hour. David White for the 2 o'clock hour. And have a terrific weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Take care.